we're not even 10 minutes in and I'm already arguing with myself. Like I already want to have a mental breakdown. Woo! Hi everyone, I'm Haley. Welcome back to my channel. It's happening again. <laughs> I'm reorganizing my bookshelves. No one cheered, literally no one, because every time I do a bookshelf video, it is always so much torment on my soul, and I don't know why, but this time I'm determined to have a good time while I'm reorganizing my shelves. I'm also going to be answering some questions because I reached 40,000 subscribers on this channel, which I still cannot believe. There are 40,000 people who decided, wow, I kind of like this content. I want to stick around for a while. Excuse me, that doesn't sound real. Why do y'all even like me? Why do you like my videos? No, I'm genuinely curious. Like, please comment down below why you subscribe to me. I can't even figure it out for myself. Like, it just doesn't feel real to me. I'm so grateful for every single one of you, though. Like, for real, this channel and all of your support has changed my life. And it's been such an incredible, fun journey. So thank you for subscribing and for being my bestie here. Make sure to subscribe and like this video and follow me on social media. It's Pages of Hate. Hayley, unless it's my TikTok where things get a little weird. That's Haley Bailey. But everything is linked down below. And join my Dangerous Woman Book Club if you want to read about amazing female characters. Before we get into the QA, you can skip ahead if you want, but I just need to say something. I'm I'm in a little bit of a rut with my content because sometimes I look at my channel, and I'm like, wow, every single one of my videos is the same. Like I'm always just sitting here in front of my shelf, like talking about the same eight books. And I want to switch it up. I know I've been promising writing videos for a very long time, but my problem is I feel like people don't actually want to see writing content. One, but two. I'm having a hard time figuring out how to structure the writing videos in a way that is not revealing too much about my own projects because I want those to remain a little secret, you know, because I do want to get published. So can't be sharing everything. But no, comment what you want to see from me on the book side and also the writing side. I do like have a writing series planned, but besides that, I need your help for like what you actually want to see from me. And then for books, I know people say reading blogs, but then I do a reading blog, which by the way, takes so much time and those videos are so long like oh my gosh and then I upload them and like no one watches them so I'm like do people actually want reading vlogs because it doesn't seem like it so just let me know what you want I'm trying to figure out new things to do different things to do so bear with me while my channel is going through it I'm gonna answer a question and then do my shelves not bookish but what are your favorite albums of all time well thank you for asking because I've actually wanted to talk about this first up I think my favorite album of all time is Red by Taylor Swift. Red and Speak Now. I remember just sitting on the floor and I had this big like boom box. I still have it because I'm a hoarder. You'll see as I'm trying to get rid of some books, they're not going anywhere. I would put the CD in my little boom box and I would just lay on the floor and listen to the music and I'd like rewind. You know that little like packet that had the lyrics of the songs? I would just sit there and learn the words to her songs. It's very rare where I will have an album that I can listen to all the way through and be like, I love this album. Oh, another album that I love, Thank You Next by Ariana Grande. I do love that album. Like almost every song on that album, I love it. Let's move some stuff on the shelf. These books, what on earth? Guys, it's happening. I think I'm gonna take everything, you can't even see me. These shelves are my favorite. I never need to change these because I love them and I think that they're perfect. I thought having one book of them on the shelf would be enough. I need like five. And people keep telling me just buy new shelves. I'm not doing that. And I've explained this before because I don't want to move eight shelves when I move out of this house. Also, the trauma I went through putting these shelves together, I do not want to do it again. <laughs> I, I don't want to do it again. We're not even 10 minutes in and I'm already arguing with myself. Like I already want to have a mental breakdown. It's not looking good for us, you guys. Will you read Heartstopper? I want to. I have wanted to read Heartstopper for years. I'll read it one day. I haven't watched the show, but I've heard great things and I want to watch it. These are all book of the month books. So I'm gonna have like eight book of the month shelves. I saw someone on TikTok. She has so many books, but she maximizes her space because what she does is she puts one of those book of the month boxes in the back and she makes like shelving, like she makes rows in different layers in her shelves. And I was like, that is so smart. But I recycled all of my book of the month boxes. I literally looked at them and was like, what if I need these one day? And now I can't create layers for my shelves. I also want to get new lights for my shelf because these are Christmas tree lights. They're freaking green. They're ugly. Huh, look what I found. I hid this behind another book because I didn't want to see it. I don't like from Blood and Ash. But this is a gift from Cassidy. I do need to read it one day. 
Choose a favorite book, only one or only one from each genre. One from each genre, okay. Well, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna do one from each genre and age range. Young adult contemporary. Oh, wait. <laughs> that is so hard. I wanna say Her Name in the Sky because that book like fully almost made me have a mental breakdown. Something about sad sapphics really just speaks to me. Adult contemporary. I must say Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. I think about it at least 1100 times a day. It's just so powerful. Tia Williams now, the next two books she has coming out, I'm literally gonna throw up. Like I'm so excited, you don't understand. My favorite adult fantasy, The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. Young adult fantasy and Ember in the Ashes. I did it. Favorite book talkers. I have so many. I'm going to put them on the screen because I don't know all of their ads and I want to make sure that y'all actually know to follow them. I feel like I have curated my TikTok feed to be so perfectly catered to me and my interests. This is turning out to be way easier than I thought it would be. And I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Someone said, why would you recommend all my rage? I'm still sobbing. You know what? And I'm happy for you. That means the book did what it needed to do. That means it hit you in all the right places. And I'm assuming that means you enjoyed it. I'm very glad. You're welcome. And if you haven't read All My Rage by Slava Tahir, then read it immediately. I think whatever books don't fit on my shelf, I'm going to put on my TBR card. And you know what actually makes more sense if I put the books I need to read on my TBR card? I'm just, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. I think I need to get a new shelf. <laughs> No. Okay, someone asked me how am I feeling lately. I just started working full time and I'm working from home, which is nice. It's flexible, but it also kind of sucks because I'm literally home all the time. First of all, I love this job. Like it's like the best job I've ever had. I would much rather be at home in my own space with my dogs than working at some random office. So I like that I have this flexibility and this opportunity. How am I feeling now? I feel pretty good. I don't know. I kind of feel like my life has been very stagnant, which is weird because I literally just graduated and you think oh but you're starting the rest of your life now i feel like you should be doing so many things and like i did like i went to europe with my friends i had a great time and now i'm home and now i'm working and i'm like what am i doing i don't know <laughs> so like i'm happy but i'm also like i feel like i should be doing more i'm writing i'm working on getting my book published so that i know is a step in the right direction not like the right direction but like the direction that i want to take my life in so i feel good about that i'm proud of myself and happy of how far i've come in terms of my well-being because <laughs> This time last year, I was about ready to give up. Last year was like one of the worst years of my life. And then even before then, like 2020, of course, was like shitty for everyone. But that was when I was like face to face with all my mental illness. And it was like, damn, like you're kind of fucked up. And so like I had to get help. I have come so far. My doctor and my therapist have told me that, which is really nice. And like having other people say that to me, it really forces me to see the progress that I've made and forces me to be proud of myself. So I'm happy, happy, I don't know. I feel like happiness is so like relative. <laughs> I feel good, I just, I kind of feel like stuck, you know? I feel pretty good. Thank you for asking. Y'all be checking in on me more than I check in on myself. And like, y'all are so sweet, like I love y'all. I feel like I should get rid of so many of these books. I can put some of these books on the bookshelf in our reading corner. We have a family reading corner. I think I'm gonna put a lot of these books there. Would you guys be interested in seeing an unhaul video? <laughs> I can show you all the books that I am taking off of these shelves. So my friend wrote this and y'all are gonna hear about her, okay? I honestly might just put Laura Olympus back up here. Is it blocking some books? Yes, but that's fine. It's allowed to do that. You know what? I'm gonna put these books on my TBR card. That is, <laughs> is the smartest idea I've had all day. You know, I don't think I have room. <laughs> It is true. I do have some books on my TBR cart that I have read and they are not to be read, but I do what I want with my cart. Okay, don't judge me. Oh my God, my degree is back here and my diploma. You know what's so crazy? I'll show you that in a bit. These are, oh my God. <laughs> I'm such a good cameraman. I might finish before I even answer a good amount of questions. I keep forgetting I need to answer questions. Also, I literally could have moved the camera like two inches and you would have been able to see me putting stuff on my TBR cart. 
Oh, and look at this, a zodiac pillow, because I'm a Leo. Can you guys tell that I'm a Leo? I feel like I'm not a Leo, I cry a lot, but I don't know, Leos are dramatic, right? That's me. The amount of questions I get of people like asking me about being single and being weird about it, like being like, this has nothing to do with books, but do you prefer being single? Or be like, are you single? Or like, would you date me? be for real i'm doing a q a i'm not gonna answer that live also i don't know you stop it it's getting weird why are people trying to flirt with me on goodreads too people are so weird i just i don't get it i've been filming for 42 minutes and i've done almost nothing i don't really know what else to do i feel like i got everything that i wanted to i'm gonna answer a few more questions who do you trust fully with book recs can be other booktubers or friends and family no one i don't even trust myself like i'm so serious there has never been a single person who has not missed when it came to book recommendations actually i will say like i trust my friend knight the only people i really trust are the female rage girlies on tiktok that just randomly post books about women killing men they never miss for me like they're always fantastic when will you do reading sprints again i don't know i'm trying to like get into my own routine and so once i do i think i will be doing reading sprints again like, when i think about actually doing them it kind of stresses me out and that's why i'm like hesitant about them but they are fun so i will start doing them soon i'm home so much <laughs> so i can do them more any good romance novels with a fully black main character seven days in june by t williams okay there is another book i didn't love this book but like you guys might like it so i'll recommend it but treasure by rebecca weatherspoon a smutty sapphic novella with black leads and they're lesbian do you struggle with ditching your ideas for your writing because they aren't original no and I actually just talked about this with my friend the other day about being frustrated with how similar other people's ideas might be to your own work. And I don't struggle with that because I don't ever think that my ideas are good enough to warrant anyone copying them or wanting to like replicate them. I think I've just like internalized the idea that nothing is completely unique or completely original. You know, as artists and creatives, we're all feeding off of other people's ideas and art that we see every day and books that we consume, whether we do it intentionally or not. So even if you feel like, wow, I've just come up with the most unique idea ever, like no one's ever done this before, I guarantee you there is some part of it that is similar to something else, even if you don't want to hear it, it's just the way that creativity works. Like we feed off of each other's work and ideas and energy constantly. But I'm not afraid of that. I don't ever ditch projects because of that. I feel like I'm really good at keeping my attention and my focus on my own work. And I feel like that helps a lot with just getting through the process. So many of my friends get sidetracked. I understand it's important to stay up to date on like contemporary publishing trends, but you don't need to be so sucked in that you start to like compare yourself because that is only gonna lead to your downfall. Fall. I just really focus on my own work. I don't compare it to other people's work because that just does nothing good for me. Yeah, nothing is ever going to be fully unique, but I can tell you that whatever story you come up with, whatever story you write, is going to be fully your own and no one will be able to replicate it. Even if they have the same comp titles or like a similar pitch or a similar concept, because they're not you, because they don't have your experiences, they don't have your voice, they don't have your style, they're not going to be able to replicate it. So you might as well just write whatever you want and worrying if someone else has done it already, that's only going to hold you back. Like just do what you want. Okay, I've gotten some questions about my book, my Harlem book that I talk about frequently because that book is the bane of my existence right now. If you want to know what this book is about, it takes place during the Harlem Renaissance and it features sapphic black vampires. The reason why they're in quotations is because I don't call them vampires in the book. You'll know what they're called when this book gets published. And that's another question I get, when are you going to get published? I don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> I need to get an agent first. And in order to get an agent, I have to query, which means this book has to be perfect enough. It needs to be clean enough and good enough to send it out to agents. And then they will decide if they want to represent me to send my books off to publishers. I've already revised this book. It's with beta readers right now. So I should be querying in a couple months. Agents, please take my book. If you want to know what this book is about, I've tweeted about it a million times. I have a pinned tweet on my Twitter. So if you want more consistent writing updates, follow me on Twitter and also Instagram. You can also see the art that I commissioned for the book. So that's fun. It's like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I'm a little biased because it is my book, but the artist is so talented. And like I, every time I go to my profile, I stare at it because I'm like, what relaxes you? So glad you asked because as someone who has high stress and severe anxiety, relaxation is very important to me. My therapist all the time is like, Haley, what are you doing to relax? And I'm like, I don't know what that word means. <laughs> The number one thing I will say is my dogs. I just pet them. I'll sit on the floor and let them lie on me. They love to just climb on me and give me hugs. It is the number one thing that relaxes me the most. Working out. I love my workouts. That helps relax me. Oh, music. I love music. It's like an instant serotonin boost and it just soothes me. 
so much. No wonder working out is so great because I listen to my favorite music and I feel so relaxed. There are some questions in here that I think I'm going to answer for when I do like a writing video because I could talk for hours about some of these. Top three holiday destinations. I was in the south of France and I adored it. I need to go back at least seven million more times in my life so that's a place. I also want to say Costa Rica because my trip to Costa Rica was one of the best times I've ever had in my life. For my third in the top three I either have to say Alaska or Tanzania or Zanzibar. All wonderful places. My trip to Tanzania was the trip of a lifetime really. Being on the safari, seeing the animals, so cool. Zanzibar, the beach is incredible, but Alaska is just so serene and the air is so fresh and the nature is beautiful. So those are my places. The south of France, specifically Nice. I love Nice. Costa Rica. I think we went to Liberia, Zanzibar, Tanzania, and Alaska. What do you hate most about book talk? There are so many things to hate about BookTok. I mean there are also a lot of things to love but there are also so many things to hate and I want to say the main thing that I hate is their refusal, their inability to take criticism. You should be able to criticize the things that you love. You should be able to look at things with nuance. Like literature was created to be analyzed, dissected, critiqued, and I don't understand why book talk just can't take criticism. And I'm like, no one is even criticizing them. Like we're literally just criticizing books and they take it so personally. It's really weird. There are other things, but I don't feel like talking for 30 minutes. So we're gonna move on. <laughs> What advice can you give to people who struggle with their mental health? I can only really say things that I know have worked for me. I know everyone is different, but what helps me I think the most is having a routine. But I'm someone who is like <laughs> very obsessive and um, compulsive. And so having a routine is helpful for me. It can help motivate you. It definitely helps to have a support system. When I get really sad and depressed, I have a tendency to cut people off. <laughs> because I just want to like be alone and that's like one of the worst things I can do for myself. So having a support system and knowing when you're like getting to a bad place and maybe like talking to them, recognizing warning signs in yourself like when you're starting to go downhill and then also just celebrating the little things like even if it's like the tiniest thing like you literally like got out of bed or you made your bed like celebrate those little things because a little can go a really really long way when it comes to mental health and I find that the the more consistent you are and the more you practice these habits it just goes so far in the long run sometimes just going outside and getting fresh air when i was deep in the pandemic my vitamin d levels were so low my doctor was like Haley, i need you to like seek help i was like i'm seeking help she's like no go outside and take a vitamin d supplement and when i tell you sunshine is like medicine like obviously it's not going to cure mental illness but like i said it's the little things people attribute big success with big big changes and big habits but what they fail to realize and what they neglect is that there are tiny steps in between that matter for every change and every success that you have in your life so you really can't neglect the little things it doesn't seem like a lot to just like go outside and breathe some fresh air or like sit in the sunlight for 10 minutes but if you make a habit of that and if you push yourself every day to do a little something I promise it will count towards a huge shift in your life in the future don't gaslight yourself let yourself be happy let yourself feel sadness let yourself feel everything because that means that you are living you gotta live okay how to get over the fear of posting and sharing your love for books i don't think i ever had a fear of this so i don't really know prioritize what you love and don't give a shit about what other people think because who cares you only have one life you can't be worried about what everyone else is thinking because then you're never gonna be focused enough on yourself like you just you need to do what you want honestly fuck their opinions do what you want thoughts on the pregnancy single parent trope i love it okay single parent especially dilf romances i've been getting into those recently so if you have recommendations please leave them down below there's just something about a big tough man being soft for only like a few people in his life it makes me so warm inside and then also pregnancy trope i love it i mean if it's what the characters want i like it I like a surprise accidental pregnancy it can be fun it can be cute i like seeing my favorite couples be all domestic with their little family i think it's fun how are revisions going on harlem book i'm excited about it revisions honestly kicked my ass because revisions are so hard especially when you're 
you're a perfectionist and need everything to be amazing and beautiful and perfect but I'm really glad that I have finished this round of revisions I'm honestly quite proud of them because you know at first when I started revising I was like I can't tell if I'm making things better I can't tell if I'm making any worthy changes to the book but I've had people tell me I love these changes that you've made like they're really great like you're making this book even better than it was before and that <laughs> not only does it make me feel good but it relieves me a lot to hear so they're going well i actually finished revisions like because the book is now with beta readers right now all i can say is i'm proud of the revisions that i've done for harlem book and i'm also glad that i'm done for now and i can't wait for people to one day get to read this book on that note i think that's enough questions if you made it this far in the video comment a dolphin emoji but anyway thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed it remember to like this video comment down below and subscribe to my channel and follow me on instagram and twitter where i post updates thank you again and i will see you next time with another video bye